All right, hey everyone, how are you all doing? So today I'm going to be attempting a Coach Chef Snackdown 2021 elimination round. And this is supposed to be a rated round as well. And it would be rated like for everybody who's giving this round. Apart from that, there is also a parallel round running, uh, which will contain exactly the same problems, but it will be rated for people who are, you know, not, who didn't qualify for this round basically. So yeah, I guess and everybody can participate here. And apart from that, uh, like there is certain, there is a certain criteria for qualification in this round. Uh, so first of all, the top 25 participants, the top 25 global participants would be qualifying directly. Uh, then there will be additional 31 slots for Indian participants, wherein, you know, the top 10 Indian participants will be qualified, uh, will qualify directly. And then the next 15 Indian participants will qualify, provided they solve at least two problems. So there are like three hours in this contest. Uh, Ideally, I should be able to solve two problems, but it kind of depends on the difficulty. So let's just see. And yeah. Also, there might be a slight improvement in the lighting since I have a ring light now. So yeah. You're given a permutation P of uh, integers from 1 to n and an integer k such that 2n by 3. Okay, 2n by 3. And this is the, this is the seal value. Is it the seal value? Yeah, it is the seal value. In one operation, you can do the following. Choose any consecutive segment of at most k elements of the permutation and sort it in increasing order. What is the smallest number of operations you have to, uh, okay, you have to make to sort the entire permutation in increasing order. All right. Uh, so first of all, the element that is one has to come at the beginning. That is the first thing, right? And let me just see if everything is fine right now. Uh, yeah, seems like. Choose any consecutive segment of at most k elements of the permutation and sort it in increasing order. Okay. Fine. This is fine. Also, it is provided that k is, uh, you know, greater than equal to 2n by 3. So if it is greater than equal to 2n by 3, what this means is that... Uh, I will first of all have to bring 1 to the first place. That is the first requirement. Yeah. Also like if I have one at a place, uh, you know, which is greater than 2n by 3, then sorting the first 2n by 3 elements doesn't really make sense. That is the thing. So one has to be brought to the first point. Now, which element should I be selecting? That is the thing here. So if one is in the end, like if it is in the third half, if it is in the third half, then... I mean, the thing is that I will never require more than how many operations. So if one is in the third half, then I bring it to the first half by using, by using how many steps? Um, I am not sure about this. Okay. So if this is the situation and this is the value of K, like it is exactly two. Oh, this is two N by three. So essentially K will be some somewhere like this, right? Okay. So all I have to do is I have to bring one to its final position. So if one is in this half, I bring it directly. If one is this side, like if one is in this 2n by 3 part, what I do is I first of all bring it to this point. So I sort these 2n by 3 elements, right? And then I bring this one to this side by sorting this part. So these many operations will be required for sure. And after that, all I have to do is um, I still have to make elements come here, right? Okay. Mm. Choose any connective segment of at most k elements of the permutation and sort it in increasing order. What is the smallest number of operations that are required? Will I ever require more than three operations? That is the question. So um, if you look at it,
first of all i'll have to bring one this side right that is the first requirement how do i bring it here mm, i don't know this is this is strange let me see if there are submissions on any other problems okay so give me give me a minute here siraj yaar hal kyun bol raha hai yeah let me see fine cool so at most key elements of permutation and sorted in increasing order So I have to bring one to the leftmost point. That is the first thing. How do I do that? If I have one here, I'll have to bring it here. So I sort these elements. Right. Hmm. then what do i do about and this seems really strange okay what if i do this what if i do this that uh, i select this 2n by 3 elements and i move it and i basically sort this part right after that what happens after that these will be the smallest n by 3 elements these will be the biggest n by 3 elements right in this part then what do i do I, i sort this part so what happens is that the smallest elements will come here n by 3 right and the middle one will be here so at max three operations are required not more than that this is this is final but where do i do these three operations that is the question now so now it depends on you know if you talk about these elements this part which is like uh, you know n minus k and this is like k by 2 this half so in at max three operations this can be done for sure but when will it when will we require zero operations that is when the whole array is sorted when will we require just one operation we will require one operation when you know if we just have to sort the first k k elements or the or these elements right um yeah so that will only require just one operation or if we just have to sort a middle point middle part right yeah so if you look at it you should have something like this 1 2 3 so on up till k if this part is sorted i don't need to do anything here then i look at the next part then i look at the next part right ha huh, right this this seems fine right i just have to look at which k elements are not sorted and this will this will always require just k steps right and what about the part if you know i think i i just need to sort elements from where they are unsorted for example if i have 1 2 3 4 and then i have 6 then this is the part where i need to start the sorting right i'll just sort next k elements here whenever i see a wrong point here okay but what if i don't get the smallest elements here
if I don't get the smallest elements this side, then I will have to do one more sorting, right? So if I look at it, I just sort the first key elements and what happens is I, that I get the minimum k this side, then the just bigger elements this side, I mean it's like k by 2, similarly k by 2 and then some elements will be left here. So I can take this whole thing, I will sort it and this will require one more operation and then this part, right. So whenever I'm doing this part, I just have to check. What do I have to check? If the first k minus one elements are sorted, if the first k elements are sorted or if the last k elements are sorted, then we are done in this. Right, then it just requires, or if this whole part is sorted. So if this whole part is sorted, then, then this is fine. Yeah. So if the whole array is sorted, then then what is the thing? Then, uh, then zero operations are required after that. If I say that the first k minus one elements are the ones that are required, then, uh, sorry, if the first k elements are the ones that are required here, then this is just, this is fine. Then this is just one operation. Similarly, if this part is sorted, then I just require one operation. And when do I require two operations? First of all, the limit is three. The limit is three, right? When do I require uh, just one operation? Or why can't I just run a loop here? That I'm here. If I'm standing here, one, two, three, four, five, six. If I get a wrong element, something like eight, I just pick up these k elements and I sort them. What's the issue in that? Because this has to go from here, right? Yeah. Once I do that, uh, I can probably start iterating from back. Yeah. If I find the biggest elements, then this is fine. If I don't, I just sort the next k elements. And then I just check if this part is sorted or not. If it is sorted, then, uh, then we don't need any more operations. If it is not, then uh, Okay, so from this side only just one operation has to be done. Then from this side only just one operation has to be done. Two are already done. Two operations are already done this side then. After that, if it is not sorted, then we can't really do anything. Yeah, 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 this is fine, this is fine. So, cool. So first swap, uh, the first operation that I do is from the start, the second operation that I do is from the end, and then I check if it is sorted or not, right? Uh, right, so uh, for If arr at i is not equal to i plus one, then we just do sort um, dot begin um, a dot begin plus plus i, and I do plus minimum of what do I add here? N minus i first of all, and then I have k. Right? These are the number of elements. Cool. Uh, then I have, yeah. Similarly, I do it from the end. Is not equal to n minus.
is not equal to i plus 1. plus i minus okay now i have to find the left and the right right and right equals to let's do it from here as well left equals to i and right equals to i plus k minus 1 comma n minus 1 this is the minimum of this right similarly int right equals to i and left equals to i minus k plus 1 right plus left okay now all i have to do is i just have to check is not equal to i plus 1 then you do uh, answer plus plus similarly here answer plus plus Okay, I have four operations here. Shouldn't this just break? Uh, I did it for two times. Zero, one, three, three. Okay. Let's just debug ARR. Also, this has to be a uh, max of. This had to be right plus one. Okay, so initially we had one, two, three, four, five, six. This is fine. Then we have, um, let's consider this case. So first I have one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, this got sorted here. Fine, so let's remove this as well. Then about this, uh, then first we sort this part. We have one, two, five, and six, and then we sort this part from here so this just required two operations fine what if i had something like two uh two in by three right so four is fine here yeah yeah this 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 seems fine let's submit it let's submit it wrong answer okay why am i getting a wrong answer here mm, let me see so if um, this is vector int fine if arr i is not equal to i plus 1 then left is i right is minimum of i plus k minus 1 and n minus 1 fine so I sort this part. ARR dot begin plus left, ARR dot begin plus right plus one. Fine. Similarly, here I do uh, left is equal to I minus K plus one should it be? Yeah. Okay, what if I just have three elements? Three, two, one. Initially, I have uh, the answer should be three, right? Yeah. Yeah, I don't think ever we need three more than three operations. That is right. Okay, let's just see. Let's just, you know, uh, do this. Um, uh, 
assert i is right so this should be giving a wrong answer if i if i am not able to sort it completely um okay so i've taken the input this is fine then i'm going from left to right and i'm doing this if you are at i is not equal to i plus one i just sort the next k elements this is what i'm doing because this has to be removed from here right yeah okay maybe we can do it in just three operations uh, maybe we can just just do it in two operations sometimes and i'm doing it in three maybe that is the issue so it might happen that when we go from right to left we get lesser of number of operations can it be like that yeah i think it can be like that as well if we go from right to left or if we go from left to right which one is better because when we bring those elements in the middle and then we push them and otherwise if we go from oh so we can go from left to right and we can go from right to left the one that gives the best answer should be considered right Okay, this is one part, and then I have int helper two. And do I ever need to do it in the middle? Would that ever help me? No, I don't think doing it in the middle ever helps, or does it? I think doing it in the middle can also help. let me just see if i do it from left to right this is fine then i do it from right to left that is also fine but will i ever have to do it in the middle first like if that part is already sorted No, no. Doing it in the middle never helps first, so this is fine. Right. This is helper. This is helper one. This is helper two. right so here i'm doing it in the yeah because what can happen is that uh, okay let's let's not discuss that case but that is one possibility so this is fine then this one here we are doing it at the end first then in the left side and then in the middle right and here i'm just checking if it is fine or not right okay this seems fine
okay fine so this was like a very silly error um, not exactly a silly error this was definitely an edge case that i should have thought about before submitting but anyway let's move to problem problem b Okay, has nobody solved any problems here? Okay, seems like a lot of people have already solved it. Anyway, let's move to problem B. To prove that writing graduate work is important, you decide to invent some interesting problem connected to it. You are given a weighted complete, weighted complete, undirected graph on end nodes. For let me just close this. For every pair of vertices i j, there is an edge with weight d into i minus j plus c i j between them, where c i j is between zero to d. Okay. Remember that graph is undirected, so there will be there will be edge with such weight in both sides. Uh, okay. You need to solve the traveling salesman problem on this graph. In other words, you need to find the length of the shortest possible route that visits each node exactly once and returns to the original node. Okay. Ah, fine, okay. You have to visit each node exactly once and then return to your current node. And the thing is that D can be only up till 1000. Cij is less than this. And the weight is simple. It is i minus j in plus Cij. D times i minus j plus Cij. So what happens is that this component of D into i minus j, this is, this is supposed to be very huge. Right? Because Cij is obviously less, right? So I won't be going onto a path that has something like, uh, that has a bigger component of i minus j. Right? So if I go from 1 to 2 to 3, then from 3 I go to 4, 5, and then I come back to 1. Right, yeah. So this would have a very huge, huge component in i minus j from 5 to 1. That is one thing. Similarly, if I decide to go from, uh, you know, 1 to, I go from 1 to 2, then to 3. And then I go from 3 to probably, I don't know. This component of i minus j is just huge. That is the thing that is supposed to be considered here. Right. Um, so here, if you look at it, he's going from one to three, then to four, then to two, then to one. Uh, right. Four to five, five, four, three to four, four to five, five to two, to one, two, three. Okay, the component of i minus j is huge that is supposed to be considered d into i minus j. We won't be wanting to, you know, jump from places like 1 to 5, then to 4, then to 2, then to 6, let's say. That, that won't really help. So what I can do is I can define my, I can first of all define my starting point. That is very important. For example, I define my starting point to be x. So I go to either x plus 1 or I can go to x plus 2 as well and then come back to x plus 1, maybe like this. Right, yeah. But then I'll have to go to something like x minus 1 as well. Yeah. So if I select x, if there are just two nodes, then we are done. Then we can go from one to this and then come back to this. This is fine. If let's say I have three nodes. So what all can I do? I can go from one to one to three, then to two and then to one. Or what else can I do? I can go from one to two, then to three and then to one. 
विच इज़ बेटर हेयर आई मीन दिस वेट इज़ कॉमन दिस वेट इज़ कॉमन देन दिस इज़ कॉमन दिस इज़ कॉमन और आई कैन डू लाइक दिस आई कैन गो फ्रॉम टू टू थ्री थ्री टू वन एंड देन वन टू टू वट हैपन्स हेयर इज दैट दिस इज कॉमन वन इनिशली आई वॉज डूइंग वन टू 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 थ्री एंड कम बैक कमिंग बैक टू वन सो हेयर वॉट इज कॉमन इज टू टू थ्री इज कॉमन वन टू थ्री इज कॉमन एंड देन वन टू टू इज कॉमन सो एवरी थिंग इज कॉमन इन फैक्ट हेयर राइट सिमिलरली इफ आई वॉन्ट टू गो फ्रॉम थ्री टू वन वन टू टू एंड टू टू थ्री सो दिस अगेन एवरी थिंग इज कॉमन राइट I will have to at one point, you know, go from go for positive two and then minus two. This this is always going to happen. Or in fact, if you look at this part, then I'm just doing positive two minus two and then plus one. okay and if you talk about this one then i'm doing uh, minus 2 positive 1 positive 1 okay how is the sum not coming out to be zero oh this was positive 1 right yeah so whenever you do this uh, this overall sum will be coming out to be zero this overall sum of addition and subtraction this will come out to be zero because we are coming back to the same position right but uh, and we want to do it in as less of you know i minus j as possible okay so we can have positive 2 minus 2 positive 2 minus 2 something like that and the thing is that the sum never repeats the sum never repeats okay fine uh how does it not repeat first of all if we have uh, let's say x then eventually it has to come to x right so we can go to x plus 1 x plus k let's say then we can go to x plus l this value of where we are going does not repeat that is the thing when we are when we are going to every point just once then this value does not ever repeat right i mean not this this part plus k plus l all of this does not repeat so how do i minimize this part i think this thing of i cij does not does not really matter what matters is how you are able to do this okay difference in okay this is order of n factorial this does not work cyclic permutation cyclic graph with edge weight really sure how to do this
I think I've solved a similar problem on gold forces around this. I don't know, I don't remember that problem now. Mm. Okay, so what I can do is I can do a plus K. Let's say I do a plus K here, you know, and um, then I can go to all the values still here with very few weight right and then I will have to do another something like this right but I will also have to come back below and then reach here okay so this is what happens first I go up then I come down then I go up again and then I come down and then I go here right now the question is why would I want to go up come down and then go up again shouldn't I do this like this that I go here go here go here go here then go here and then probably you know come here 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 then go down and then come back again up why shouldn't I do this In fact, if you look at it, uh, I'm first of all going up. So this weight will be added. This weight will be added for sure. When I'm going up, then I'm coming down. And then I'm going back here. Am I ever, you know, doing it like this that Okay, let me look at the answers that they're given. So they started at three, then they went to three, four. So the difference is one, then the difference is one again. Then the difference is what? This and then the difference is this. So this difference I will, I think will be common for sure. Like what you're doing is this. First of all, you're going up, then you're coming down and then you're coming back to this point. So this, this sum, what is this? This is like, x from the maximum value this is like uh, max minus x times d this is one thing then i have max minus min times d that is one thing and then i have uh, x minus min times d that is one thing i think this this is something that you are always doing right so what is the actual value here this is like max time max this will get cancelled out. So this is like twice, two times max minus minimum into D. I think that this is what we're doing, right? Yeah, just a minute. Um, two times max minus minimum into D. And what is max? Max is just five, uh, max is just N, minimum is one, uh, right? So I have two into N minus one into D. This is something that I'm always adding. Now the CIJ value is different, right? So now I just have to consider CIJ, I guess. Right. So first I'm going up, then I'm coming down and then I'm going up again. Hmm, fine. Now, how would I want to do this? That is the question. When I'm going up, coming down and then coming up again, how would I want to do this? So for each node, either I can assign it, uh, either I, I can assign it an increasing value or I can assign it a decreasing value. Like either I'm going up for it, from it, or I'm coming down from it, right?
okay so if i have three let's say and i tell you that i'm going up from it right i'm going up from it coming down and then coming back to it uh, okay okay so my direction is not changing that is very important my direction is not changing if i am you know yeah yeah my direction is not changing i think this is very simple now if you look at it, i can you know consider it like a two into n type of thing if i'm assign if i'm starting from one here i have to come back to one here right yeah i have to come back to one uh, and how do i do it i just keep on moving to values and then, then i go here similarly if i'm starting at three i will have to move to the next three how will i do it i will hop on to these values and come back to this um right 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 so i am doing three four five then i went from five to two then i went to one and then i went to three i could have also done it something like you know I went from 3 to 5, okay. 3 to 5, then to 4, then to 2, then to 1, then to 3. So for each value, either I am skipping it right now or I am taking it, ah, right. Yeah, so my direction is not changing, I am always going this side. Okay, but I could have also done it something like this, right? 3 to 4 to 5, then to 1, then to 2, then to 3. I could have done it like that as well. Uh, okay. So if I consider my array as something like this, 1, 2, 3, so on up till n, and then I, you know, start from here, something like n minus 1, so on up till 1. Now what happens here is that for all the values, uh, just a minute, when I go from 2 to 1, then to 3, right, so if you look up, look at this 3, then I'm only going upwards. Then from here, I come back here and then I come back here. Ah, right. So I have to pick every value once. Right, right, right. I have to pick every value once. Either I pick it in this direction or I pick it in this direction. Ah, cool. Yeah, this, this seems correct. The value of D will always be same, but my direction is not changing. So what I can do is I can probably assign, you know, these edges and, but then I'm not running a dijkstra here. No, I'm not running a dijkstra. Each value is either up or down. If it is down, then you're coming here. If it is up, then you're going here. Direction will be maintained, yeah. Now, what are the values which don't have a choice here? If you look at this n, you only come here and then you go here, right? This does not have a choice. Similarly, this one, this one doesn't have a choice. Ah, right. Cool. So either the value is here, here, or it is in the middle. Right.
Okay, so have something like this one, two, three, so on up till n. Then I have n minus one and so on up till one. If you start with n, then you have to return to n as well, right? So I will be having something like this. Yeah, so for this one, I am referring to this one. For this n, I am referring to this n. Cool. Euler circuit, minimum Euler circuit I need to find. Complete directed graph with n nodes, each pair of have both directed edges. You should find a cycle in Kn that visits every directed edge exactly once. Okay, this is not what we require. Hmm. There has to be some algorithm for this. My edges are restricted. Yeah, the good part is that my edges are restricted. If I start with this three and I come to this three, will it always be same if I go from one to one? So if I'm going from one to one, then I'm going all the way up till n and then coming back to this. So either you pick it up here or you pick it up here. Fine. I mean, there is just one node from which you know you are going to some node and coming back from another node. So this will repeat, but this will also repeat. Like if I'm at two, then I'm, I'm going to two, and then I'm you know moving from two somewhere else. Yeah. So this weight will be added. This weight will also be added. Okay, so for each node, if I'm here, 
I have an incoming edge, I have an outgoing edge. This is what is required. Fine. Yeah, we don't have to care about anything else. There is an incoming edge, there is an outgoing edge. Now, if I talk about an incoming edge, uh, this can be from values that are smaller. Or I can even go here, then come up and then come back here. Yeah. Right. So if I'm going to a bigger value, Ah, right. So if I'm choosing an element X, if it's incoming edges from a smaller value, then it's outgoing edge will be to a bigger value. Right, this is what is required. Yeah, so if you look at this graph, I don't know, very strange this is. For every node I am moving inside, then I'm going out. The good part is that uh, I'm only, you know, doing this part. That I'm com if I'm coming from a smaller value, I'm going to a bigger value. If I'm coming from a uh, bigger value, then I'm going to a smaller value. This is what is required for every node. Right. So let's say I tell you that I have a node, which is X. And I fixed that, you know, it has an incoming smaller edge and outgoing bigger edge. Right. This is what I've fixed. Now, what happens is that uh, I will have to have some bigger values, right? So I have some bigger values here. So one of them has to have an edge for which, you, are, you know, you're coming from a smaller and going to a bigger. For example, if you talk about N, it is coming from a smaller and then that is going to a bigger. Uh, yeah, n has to be in that form that it is coming from a smaller and then also going to a smaller. Right. So if I select two nodes here, let's say this is x and this is y. This has to go all the way up till 1. This has to go all the way up till 1. Ah, okay. Fine, fine, fine. So what I'm doing is I'm selecting this N. Uh, in fact, I can do it the other way around as well. I am here. And this is what I do. I am at 1. Okay, I select one node here, X. I select one node here, Y. Fine. Then all I do is I just go on up till N. Similarly, I come back here. The nodes can be on this part or the nodes can be on this part. So for each node, there is a choice. Either you pick it here or you pick it up the next time it comes. Fine. And these are for all the nodes that are in between. Like this is N. This is 1. For all the nodes in between, you have a choice. Whether you want to take it up this side or you want to take it up this side. Fine. Now, if you look at two, let's say I talk about two, okay? So either you're putting it at this side or you're putting it at this side, right? Let's say I tell you that I'm putting it at this side. So I have this weight added. Then let's talk about three. If I'm putting it at this side, 
then again the weight is added but if i'm not putting it at this side then the then this weight is added 1 2 3 ah right then this weight is added right similarly uh, now if i have to move to 4 let's say this is 4 right so where will i add it will i add it this side or will i add it this side like i have two choices either i can put it with 3 or i can put it with 2 ah i think this is this is this is simple now this is done So I have C I J. Okay. For example, just a minute. Where do I have the input? Okay, I see. in grade at i comma j okay so what do i do i just you know int i equals to 0 right okay but there is also another thing right if I talk about the last value, like if I'm putting this 2 here, I'm adding this part. For the 3, I can either put it here or I can put it here. Right. So I have two choices at every point. Either I can put it this side or I can put it this side. This side. But if I put it at one of the sides, then, then things are changing. I could have easily diff, you know, done it using DP. Because now if I put a 4 here, then the two sides are 3 and 4. Now it also depends on N. What values do I want? This is not so simple. If I talk about 2, it has to go at one place. So I put it this side. Now if I talk about 3, it can come here. Yeah, so I can either I can have, you know, one end three or I can have two and three. This is my choice. Similarly, like if I have one and three, after that I can have one and four or I can have three and four. This is my choice. After this, I can have uh, four and two or I can have three and four. This is again my choice. So this part is repeating. Okay, so the bigger value will be at one point, right? Yeah. Okay, so if I want to calculate dp of i comma j, also will I be, you know, doing half of the value that I actually get? 
if i'm doing dp of i comma j it only depends upon uh, you know dp of j comma j plus 1 or it depends upon dp of i comma j plus 1 yeah so this this dp state is fine okay So if I have dp of 1 comma 1, you add it to one side, alright, I think this can be done using dp. Now, I mean, I'm doing it recursively just because of the fact that I don't know the flow here, the flow of states. Okay, so if i equals equals to n minus 1, j equals equals to n minus 1. Then you return, um, also I can have this dp as global, I guess, yeah. Right, so return grade of i comma. This has to be n minus 2, right? Mm. dp at i not equal to Also, I can just, you know, do it like this. If i is less than j, then you swap i and j. So this way I won't be calculating every dp state twice. Fine, after this, um, so either you return helper of, okay, answer 1 equals to grid of i comma j plus 1 plus helper. So this state won't be required. This won't be required then. Uh, I is always the smaller. So I have a grid of i comma j. Then I have this. Grid of j comma j plus 1. see how this works out okay 
Okay, 18 and 38, uh, but the answer that I'm getting is 32. Okay, so is this part different? Like this is plus one, plus one, minus two, minus one, plus two. Is this part different? Like I'm going up, coming down, then coming back to that same position. So it was um, max times x, max minus x times d plus max minus min times d plus x minus min. So this was like max minus min times d and it was twice. So yeah, this, this part is fine. Let's just consider only this case. Okay, what if I just had two nodes? Two nodes and the value of D was, let's say one. And I had something like this. Okay, I'm getting two here. What about this? Okay, what if everything was zero? I had, uh, I have three nodes. Right. And the value was two. So I go from three to, or in fact, I go from one to two, two to three, and then three to one. One to two, two to three, three to one. So I have this value as one. This is one. This is one. This was two in fact. So two, two, two times two. This this is fine, I guess. Yeah. Answer one is grid of i comma j plus one because that is where I'm putting it. Right. And then I have helper of i comma j plus one n. Similarly, if I put it at J, uh, no, if I put it here, then I have, no, this will be different. If I put it at this side, then this will be J and J plus one, okay. And otherwise it will be I and J plus one. Right, now this should be fine. Ah, cool, let's submit this. Okay, running for a very long time. Ah, wrong answer. Why would I get wrong answer on this? This was supposed to be fine. Cij is less than D. That is the thing. Why am I getting a wrong answer? Let's look at it just once again. 
this was 2000 right yeah okay let's look at it again uh, i am adding it this side so i will be free and j plus 1 will be free similarly if i'm adding it at i then j and j plus 1 will be free this seems to be right what is the issue now this is fine this is also fine this should have started from zero right i am starting from zero mm -hmm. oh my god i think i was getting the same answer because because they had already said it is zero yeah, i think that was the issue here I think now it should be fine. <sighs> ah, wrong answer again. Okay, what could be an issue here? Okay, I'm defining another grid here, right? This is wrong, first of all, because this is like taking local reference. Oh my God. What insane stuff I'm doing, I don't know. This is just insane. This should have been the same grid that this is not what I need to pass. I don't have to pass this. That was a different grid there. Now I'm getting 38 again. This should have been 32 or 38. This is 38 only, right? Yeah. Okay, so there was some mismatch between the local and the local, uh, the local and the global variables. So let's submit it again. This is just insane. Why do they have so many test cases? This was correct on the very first <laughs> submission, I guess. Not on the very first, on the second one, because like there was a typo at that place. Like I had, you know, sent one one, and I had to set zero, send zero zero. Anyway, 
let's look at the country standings okay so quite a lot of people have already done two problems i am not in the top 25 right now definitely not in the top 25 So this one is done now. Cool. So I have done two problems. Like I am in the list of people who have solved two problems. So uh, solving two problems criteria criteria is met now. Let's you know improve the rank. And I hope this is not a geometry problem. Uh, seems like. Yeah, anyway, but there is quite a lot of time remaining. So I should give it a good amount of time and a good try here. You've given two increasing arrays of length of n integers, x1, so on up till xn and so like this. Okay, find a permutation. Uh, how do I pronounce this? Sigma, sigma 1, sigma 1, sigma 2, so on up till sigma n of integers 1, 2, n. Let's define a of sigma in the following way. The points, consider the points, this. equals to the oh, oh. I can't do this I have no knowledge of geometry I can't do this Okay, is my rank still 227? No, the score is one only. Are there people who've solved three problems as well? No, there aren't any. Uh, my speed should have been better here. <laughs> 172 is the rank that I'm getting right now. And if you talk about country rank, then this is something like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Something like um, 35. Yeah, 35. Mm -hmm. Okay, feels great to be among people who are into Google, Uber, Microsoft. <laughs> anyway, equals to the area of A sigma equals to the area of the Let's sum of A sigma overall. One can show that 2s is an integer under the constraints of the problem. Right. So find the remainder of 2s modulo. Okay. So what they're saying is that you consider these points like this. And you have this. Right, so you basically have to consider the permutations. Like if this is one of the permutations that you're taking, then um, how do you define an area here? What if I decide to do something like this? That is not a convex polygon, but What exactly is a convex polygon bit? Where every angle is less than 180. Yeah. Let's 
reach out to you. I don't know any of this shit, honestly. <laughs> uh, okay. Okay, so I have to find the convex cell. I don't have to include all the points. Like I am so bad at convex cell that I'm thinking on some other lines only. Okay, I have to find the area of the convex cell of these points. Okay, just a minute. Also, this was this I think was a pretty tough problem. This was not at all easy. So I'm kind of happy that I did this one. My rating should improve, I guess, yeah. If Even if I don't qualify now, my rating should improve. I should reach 6 star again with this performance, ideally. Yeah. Okay, what's, what's happening in the parallel round? Let's see that. I am in no mood of solving the third problem. I have no idea. Uh, what is going to be happening? Uh, how is all this convex cell and stuff defined? Okay. What about diff two? Okay, so there are some extra problems in diff two. Yeah, so it is starting from here. And diff three. Okay, so diff three has even more problems. Anyway, 